Hey everybody, it's Craig Vector here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Leaming LUT Pro for the Panasonic GH5. We're going to use the HLG mode for an example. I'm going to show you the back of my camera so you can see how I use the waveform monitor and how I use the X-Rite Video Color Checker Passport to gauge a proper exposure. This is if I'm shooting a subject. It's a little bit different, obviously, if you're just shooting a landscape. So I'm going to show you how I use the waveform monitor and the Zebra function to get an accurate exposure for your subject. Now you could use these same concepts for V-Log or for Cine D or for any just exposure mode. Also walk you through some of the tweaks that I make in the software as well. Also too, I think it's very important that you follow his PDF guides. So he has two PDF guides that you get when you purchase these LUTs. I'm gonna walk you through how to install the LUT in Adobe Premiere Pro. Also, it's very important to follow step-by-step is camera setup instructions for each of these. So if you're doing Vlog or Cine D or HLG, the only difference I found was I set my HLG Zebras to 95. You'll see that in the video. Anyway, let's get right into the video. All right, so here we are. We're looking at the screen of the Panasonic GH5. Now I have the waveform enabled. So you can see the waveform. So now if I adjust my aperture, so that's my shutter angle at 180. If I adjust my aperture, you can see now we have zebras. So I'm using my waveform and my zebras. So we're in HLG on the Panasonic GH5 using the Leaming LUT Pro settings in the PDF guide. Now, if you look at the waveform monitor, you can see right here that we're right at the top. So that top line is where it peaks out and that also corresponds with the zebras that we see. So if I bring this down, you can see our zebras disappear now. So you can see that we have our 100 or our 90 line here, which is below 100. And you can see now this is not peeking out. Now I have this set for my zebras. I have my zebras set on zebra one. I have them set at 95, although Paul recommends 90. Now you can see here at the bottom, that will be the darks and that'll be the brights. Now I'm gonna step in front of the camera and you should see that it's gonna correspond with an accurate exposure for me. And this is the harshest lighting conditions possible. So I'm gonna get my face close to here, but this is the harshest lighting conditions possible. We're in bright sunlight, there's no clouds. It's about midday. This is about as harsh as it gets. So you may wanna go down even one more stop, but it's important too, if you look at the waveform monitor, I'll have that show up as I move my head. You can also see where my face is in the waveform monitor as I move. And so you wanna gauge skin tones. And that's gonna to depend too if someone has darker skin or lighter skin like me. So that's one thing you might wanna practice with before you go out into say like a harsh sunlight condition like this is to do a little test like this. Using this chart, using the person you're going to shoot with, go in and say, hmm, where do we want their skin tones to fall? Do we want them to be at the 70 line? Do we want them to be at the 80 line? Like I said, as I move my head, you can see where that fits in. So make sure that you're getting a good exposure. I would say we could probably go down a bit. I'm gonna step forward. I'm gonna change that and go down a bit. All right, so the previous setting was F8. I switched it to F9. So I'm letting less light in. So you can see it might be a little bit better. Now I can't see because I have the screen on the Sony, so I can't even see if I'm overexposed right now but imagining that I'm pretty close. So we're gonna go down one more stop just so you can gauge that. So the first one was F8, then we went to F9, then we're gonna to go to, uh, we're gonna to go to F10. So we started at F8, the last one was F9, now we're back at F10. So you can see how this sort of has an effect. And also too, you can make adjustments in post, although it's good to get the best exposure that you can, and that's without overexposing. Now you have to make a choice too because the dynamic range is somewhat compressed on these cameras so they can't capture everything our eyes can see. So when I'm shooting subjects I like to put the exposure on them so a really good exposure on them. I don't worry about blowing out some highlights in the background if it's about the person. Now if I'm shooting a landscape then that's different so you have to gauge what you're shooting and if you see that you're blowing out something in the back sometimes shift your position. Say you have something white behind someone and that's obviously blown out. If you shift your position sometimes to a different background, you can compensate for that. All right, in this clip, I'm gonna show you how to install the Leaming Pro LUTs so that you can use them in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm on a Mac. Now I have the LUTs for both Panasonic. I've already installed those. Now I'm gonna install the ones for Sony. So you unzip it, and then we have them here. You can see them right here. 
So I've opened up another Finder window just to make this easier for myself. Now what you want to do is go to Adobe Premiere Pro. If you click on the little arrow here, you can see it drops down. So we have a second one here. Now if I double click or right click, you can see Show Package Contents. Now if I do that, I see the contents. If I click on that arrow, I can see a bunch of different folders under that. Now if I go to Lumetri, and if I look for LUTs, I click here, now I can see Creative, Legacy, or Technical. Now if I click here, I can see the Creative LUTs. If I click here, I can see the Legacy LUTs. And if I click here, I can see the Technical LUTs. Now we want to place these in the Technical LUT category. Now you can see if you look here, I already have the Panasonic ones here. Leaming LUT, Rec. 709, Vlog L. So what I want to do, the easiest way is if I just click on these, and I highlight all of them, and if I drag them over to the technical LUT. Now you can see where it's highlighted five. I let go, it says authenticate, and I say okay. Now that's transferred the LUTs. Now we can see they're in our technical folder. Now I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna close this. Now we're not gonna be able to see them in Adobe Premiere, because I have it open. So I'm gonna close this, and then I'm gonna open it up, and then we should be able to see it. So I just wanna show you an example. Here's the Sony track right there. If go to input LUTs. I can see the Panasonic. I can't see the Sony, although I know I just put them in there. I'm gonna close Premiere Pro. I'm gonna save first, Command S to save. And I'm gonna close this and we'll pick up when we open it back up. All right, so we're just opening the project again that we had open. And previously we couldn't see the Sony LUTs, but now that I've closed it and opened it, now we can see them here. So here we have the Leaming LUT Pros for Sony. Now this track here is just a shot of my GH5 camera screen. So this is all gonna to come together in the video, you'll see. But I shot this on HLG on the Sony. So we're gonna to go to HLG Sony, and that should give us a little bit better color. We'll just bring up the exposure a bit. You can see we have our exposure meters over here. I can bring up my whites a little bit if I want, but uh, we'll just go up a little bit there. And now if I toggle this on and off, you can see we have the before and after. So we just have a little bit better contrast and better color but you would apply this to your Sony footage. Anyway, that's how you install the LUTs in Adobe Premiere Pro on a Mac. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm gonna give you some tips for color grading now. So here we are, we're on the editing tab. We're gonna to move to the color tab. I'm gonna show you some scopes I have enabled. Now this clip we're looking at here, this is actually a Vlog clip because although we've been talking about HLG, I know someone's probably gonna ask a question about Vlog. So we'll talk about that in this as well. All right, so we want to switch to our color tab. So now when I switch there, we have our Lumetri color tools on the right, and we have scopes on the left. Now, if you don't see these scopes, if you come down to the gear icon where it says settings, if you right click, then you'll see the menu pop up. I'll click on there. Now you can see I have the vector scope, YUV enabled, the RGB parade, and the RGB waveform. Now this is going to help me with the color grading. Now the only difference really with V-Log is you can see it's a much compressed dynamic range. So you can see we've got 20 to just below 80. Now you'd have a wider range if you were in HLG, but it's going to be basically the same type of adjustments that you would make. So there's a couple ways to do this. If you only have one clip, like a talking head or something, you can do all your adjustments in that one clip. If you have a bunch of clips, it's easier just to create an adjustment layer and do your LUT uh, adjustments on that adjustment layer. But anyway, we've just got this one clip, so we're just going to use this one. Hopefully that's clear. So I showed you how to import them. So when you go to the input LUT, you click there, you can see we have the different LUTs. So this is Panasonic V-Log, and I'm gonna click there. So if it was HLG, you would just apply the HLG or the CDD. Now you can see that made a big difference. If I toggle this on and off, you could see that really popped the color and it already expanded the dynamic range for us. So you could see that. Now, depending on the LUT, in your footage, sometimes you may see a drop in exposure. So you may want to experiment with an adjustment layer or applying it to the clip directly and see if that makes a difference too. So I know some people have said that their exposures drop dramatically, but you can see here it actually, it works quite well. So it really depends on the mode you're using, whether it be Vlog or HLG and the method that you're using. So there's not a whole lot that really needs to be done here. I can see I could probably lower my blacks a little bit so I can go to my blacks here and I could lower that a bit to just touches the bottom. Now, also, we can use the white balance selector tool, and we could just come over to our white patch. We can click that. It didn't really make that much of adjustment. It tweaked a little bit. I did a custom white balance, 
So what I suggest you do is set your exposure like we talked about in the first part of the video. If you flip this chart around, there's a gray side. That's when I do a white balance, a custom white balance adjustment for every scene. So it's a handy card. It's the X-ray color checker video passport is what it's called. Now, I don't think I'm going to adjust the exposure too much. If anything, I could probably bring my highlights down a little. So I'm just going to bring those down, but I don't think I'll be able to recover them that well in the background. They're a little blown out, but you could experiment uh, as you do this. So the basic adjustments really are to try to get your red, green, and blue even to try to get the most dynamic range without blowing out your highlights and also looking at your vector scope, and making sure that your colors don't go beyond the borders. And if anything, I think I can go maybe 101 here on my saturation and that's about it. And like, again, if I toggle this on and off, you could see our vlog footage looks really good and it's quick compared to if you did all these adjustments yourself. Now, if you want to color grade and do the shadows and things like that, then you can explore some of these other areas on your own. Anyway, hopefully you found this video helpful. Leave some comments below if you have any questions. All right, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.